Hello, 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 amigas, and welcome to Amiga Handle Your Shit podcast. Okay, I have my beautiful soul sister, Christina Igarevides, um, who is a storytelling coach. And like I mentioned before, she's my coach, my writing coach. And it's been really a pleasure to have her coach me um, so that um, I can actually say what I want to say. <laughs> Sometimes I get lost in my head and in translation. And it's so awesome to have somebody else review your work and encourage you to maybe change a word or two. And that makes a huge difference. And so I'm so excited to have Christina here to talk to you guys, not only about her journey into storytelling, but her process as well, because I think it's very important for those amigas out there who are contemplating in writing a book. She's, she's your lady. She's your woman. She's your guide. So make sure you pay attention because this is super, super important. So Amiga, Christina, welcome to Amiga Handle Your Shit podcast. Oh my gosh. Thank you so much for having me, Jackie. So excited. <laughs> And it's so different, Amigas, because usually she's the one that provides the the um the hosting vehicle of the of of the storytelling. And so we're constantly figuring out like, okay, all right, let's make sure that we're on time and blah blah blah. Anyways, but now it's like the other way around. I'm like, ooh, I get to talk to her and ask her questions. I know. Why am I nervous? <laughs> oh, no. It's like oh, payback. I know, payback. right? <laughs> <laughs> all the times I pushed you I know. I'm, like, I'm like what what do you mean you want to change that no I don't want to change it yes you're gonna change it no I don't want to change it <laughs> yeah right <laughs> so oh my goodness amigas over there outside um listen so who is Christina and so you know as you know amigas I love for all of you to you know hear her story how she came about to be on a stage and so but before that de donde es where is she from so tell us christina you know where are you from are you from la are you from the states i mean we don't know anything so just explain to us where are you from yes i'm from the south side of chicago Woo. the city represent of chicago not the suburbs get it right <laughs> and, uh, <laughs> Um, yeah, I grew up being raised by my single mom and grandparents my entire life. We lived in the same home together. Uh, it was my grandparents' house, and they uh, partially raised their kids in that same house, actually. So my mom had been there for a long time. And um, I stayed there all through college. I went to college at DePaul University to study marketing, uh, because that was the funnest quote unquote part of business that I thought I could get into. And I didn't really take any chances to do what I really wanted to do until I started my first corporate job. And my boss basically tells me the first week, I, I'm so gracious and feel so fortunate to have had a really wonderful first boss, a uh, woman who just really allowed me so much freedom from the start and actually helped me cultivate what was really important to me outside of this day-to-day -day job in advertising. And she just told me, uh, if, if we would joke around a lot and she was very much like me, had a sense of humor. And she told me, hey, have you ever tried taking improv classes? Uh, you know, our work pays for 50% of your tuition. Nice. <laughs> I know. And I was like, in college, I had people tell me to take improv, but I didn't really know what it was. And I didn't know what Second City was. So they were telling you to take improv because they thought you were funny? Or yeah. Oh, yeah. Okay. yeah. Oh, cool. Because I was always the jokester. Like in that, I wouldn't, I was never the class clown, but in the circles that I was in, I was always like made fun of in grade school because I hung out with the nerdy kids. I hung out with the ESL kids. I hung out with uh, whoever, you know, was kind of like outcasts. Yeah. Yeah. Just yeah. because I don't, I didn't care about, you know, labels or who they, they were. Uh, the, uh, the only people I didn't hang out with were the popular kids. Uh, so I would always, you know, we'd be in our corners and I'd always like try making them laugh. And I mostly 
like to make people laugh because I want to laugh yeah. and I don't want to laugh by myself. Right, so right, right. Yeah. It was always like a group thing, right? And uh, it's improv, you know, later on in my 20s, actually became the first door and stage for me to truly know how to take risks and how to practice being free in your body and your mind without any repercussions. Yeah. And I highly encourage everyone and anyone, I don't care how old you are, I don't care what you do to take an improv class. Oh my God. I think it, that would like, I have a couple of friends who are hella funny. Oh my God. Like, like crying on the ground, funny. Yeah. And it's, and, and I always felt like, man, these girls need to take, they need to be on a stage, like yeah. really. Uh, but I've never ever have, and I don't know if I ever will, because I feel like it's so scary. <laughs> Jackie, you are funny. Stop. <laughs> Oh my God. But I could be funny, but at the same time, I'm like, like if, if, if it's, if it's, you know, on purpose, like right. it's not going to come out funny. <laughs> yes. And that is, yes. And that is what most people think. And the, the freeing thing about improv is you're not supposed to be funny. You're supposed to get on the stage and support your partner and whoever's on stage with you. So like the golden rule is you say yes. And however you can, right. So, and it's also my first teaching and lesson into storytelling because how you start a scene is actually the best way to start a story too. And that, that is either by coming out of the line, coming on stage with uh, an emotion, uh, a piece of dialogue or a statement. And those are just some of them. There's other ways too, but those are the main ones I remember. And when you do that, you eliminate uh, questions and you uh, eliminate stress because someone is coming out saying, and the more specific, the better, always like, oh my gosh, we finally made it to the San Francisco bridge. So, okay, you're giving someone a picture of where you're at already. You're giving so much information that the partner is now like, okay, got it, we're in San Francisco. Okay, and they're like, yes, I, I'm so glad we made it. It only took us a hundred years. <laughs> <laughs> so like, okay, we're a hundred year olds. Okay, how would a hundred year olds look and act? You know, so then it changes your demeanor. So you keep giving each other information to build off of. Ah, no wonder. Cause when we're doing our, our meetings, I'm like, oh, I didn't think about that. Oh, okay. I see why, you know, you got to flush them out, flush out those characters. Yeah. You know, yeah. and you feed, uh, with you feed one another. Yes. With yes. information. Oh, exactly. Cool. Okay. So here we are in improv and you're in the marketing. Okay. <laughs> like how, how, and in Chicago, right at this yeah. point in time. Yes. Yes. And so what's next? Like what, what changed for you? Yeah. So <laughs> I mean, I, I don't know what it was for me in my life, but I just feel like I've always been supported in everything that I've done. And, and I choose to look at it that way. You know, I could also say, well, I didn't really have mass success there, you know, but um, <laughs> I wasn't like on SNL or anything. But, you know, from there, I, I was really fortunate to have a very diverse group of classmates from level one. And from then on, we just decided to take the same uh, classes together. So we moved up the ranks all together. And that it was very rare in improv, mm -hmm. in comedy schools, anywhere, Chicago, LA, New York, et cetera. Everyone I know uh, who is especially Latina or, or Black says they, which had white teachers and white classmates, they're usually the only ones of their experience. And in my class, I had um, uh, Indian people, or Puerto Rican, Colombian, Black, uh, and a good mix of, of male and female. And, 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 and I didn't know any other way. So I got really lucky in that way. And from then on, I would get uh, told, hey, uh, there's a Latina theater company. You should try auditioning for them. So I joined the biggest and the first Latina theater company in the U.S. called Teatro Luna. And that's where I learned how to create 
uh, ensemble devised original work that was rooted in our personal stories. And then we would bring them to the stage. And from then, I was also told by another classmate, hey, you should try doing stand up. I was like, no, for the longest time. But because I had people supporting me and telling me you should try all these things that I would have never thought of doing on my own, I went out and did them. So I got very comfortable um, doing scary things very early on in my life. And I, I, I can't stress enough for folks out there that if you see something in someone, tell them, you mm -hmm. know, because sometimes we will just never know uh, right. unless people point it out to us, you know, any little thing like, you know, I, oh, I, I really love how you just always know what to do with your hair, you know, or I really love how you just make things sound so much more simplified, you know, that they, they need to, whatever it is, like, just make it known, you know, uh, because that's what's helped me tremendously too. I like that. You know, it's so true. Like, uh, I'm like, they call me the random girl because my thoughts are random sometimes. Yes, I love <laughs> I love a random girl. That's me. <laughs> like, my thoughts are random, but but sometimes if, if in that randomness actually is a bit of advice. Like, it's like, oh, you know, I'll start talking about something and then, and then it becomes like that little light bulb, you know, yeah. like ding, 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 you know? And, yes. and it's true. Like I, I can totally see that uh, being like a, a plus for people, you know, yes. that, and, and for those that hear it, to actually make compliments for an, on my side, it's more of a joke because I'm <laughs> all random. They're like, Oh, there's another random thing. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> so I'm random girl. But for me, I feel like in that randomness that I am, it really keeps my vibe. Like this is who I am. And, yes. and, um, now that I'm doing this, uh, you know, I'm, I'm, you can be my coach. Like you can totally tell in my writing, <laughs> the randomness that I have. In my life. <laughs> but I love that. That's just, you know what that tells me is you are comfortable in yourself because I, I was also a random girl. Like I would just say things, you know, out of the blue, like nothing like, Oh yeah, that reminds me of this. Oh yeah. Like that. Right. <laughs> and I'd be like, no, <laughs> but I would get a laugh, you know, right. I right. just took so many risks to just, just for a laugh most of the time. <laughs> that, that is so cool. And you, and you need to have those uh, in, words of encouragement. Yeah. People to do stand up and to really um, follow your passion because, you know, we get stifled. I know I did. I get, yeah. I got stifled with, with, oh, are you going to be educated and, and get that law degree? Or are you going to be a fashion? Mm. <laughs> fashionista? Mm -hmm. And of course, we all know what happened there. <laughs> uh, shatter dreams. Oh. But, but you know what I mean? Like, like, it's just so important for especialmente Latinas to yes. just follow that, right? Yes, totally. and, and, and also build reinforcement, like, and encouragement to other yeah. Latinas. Yes, exactly. And, and it doesn't have to be because a lot of times we're like, ah, like, what is even my purpose? Like, what is my drive? And like, it doesn't have to be that hard because what I, all, all I followed is what feels good. You know, mm -hmm. um, when I started doing improv, as scary as it was to do those shows, and I even ended up writing pitches at, to Second City for us to get on one, their smallest stage you know, because the main stage was reserved for the professionals, but they had this smaller stage that you could pitch your show to. And I pitched our show and we got on for a couple seasons and doing paid shows, which was a big deal, you know, doing this at 23 or whatever it was, you know, and, um, and get it and getting that confidence in myself too. And so when I said, when someone told me to, Oh, try this, try that. I'm like, well, you know, is that going to feel good? Um, I think it might. Okay, let me try and see. I and I, yeah, I just started realizing how much I love to tell stories in any platform and space. And and from the theater company, 
I was encouraged to start a YouTube channel. And I was one of the first like Latinas out there doing sketch comedy on YouTube and went viral, you know, for, for doing um, plays on bashing Latina stereotypes. You know, before there was a pero like and a me too, yeah. like I was out here on my own. Just <laughs> 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 Why don't you share one one of your one of your um, nuggets on that you did? Well, the first video upload I ever did was called uh, "Shit White Girls Say to Latinas," oh. <laughs> and, and this was like in 2012, I think, and um, and it was a play off of Francesca Ramsey's "Shit White Girls Say to Black Girls." So I was just like trying to do the Latina version of everything that I saw. And that's also how I teach, you know, cultivating your own voice is don't feel like you have to sound like certain people, but mimic other people. You know, if you like how what someone is doing, do it and try to give your own spin on it, because that is actually how we stand in our own voice is we've always been influenced by other people since we were kids. Right. We have no other way to learn who we are without the influence of the people who surround us right yeah yeah that just made me think of, of uh, it's she-ra yeah. <laughs> yes she-ra <laughs> I'm, oh, because this... I'm like holding myself back <laughs> oh because that's a whole different issue but <laughs> yes but yes I love that yeah because we we start at young age right we mimic what we see on tv yes and like back in my days there were these cartoon characters like even wonder twin Ta- wonder twin powers activate like yes. and we would play out these scenes and i could totally i could totally see this like yeah we cultivate our own voice by mimicking other people yes exactly exactly and there's no shame in doing that unless you you know there's obviously rules to it like no plagiarizing and don't do word for word what other people do right right right, Uh, right. but that that's all you know comes from our our gut too and and what what is right and wrong but but yeah and from then I decided oh I took obviously a ton of acting classes in Chicago and in one of the classes our teacher once told us all right uh I want everyone to go around the room and tell me what your five-year plan is because if you want to really do this, you can't stay here in ah. Chicago. <laughs> oh, I was wow. like, what? And he's like, yeah, you have to either move to New York or LA. So which one is it going to be? And I'm like, oh, crap. Like, I got to move? <laughs> <laughs> and leave my family? Right. I, oh, my. I've never left. Never. And suddenly I found myself seriously thinking about what it would be like if I moved. And I had been at my job for three years when I started kind of manifesting this subconsciously. Yes, Yes. Uh, I was put on a client that was actually New York based and I started flying out there for work. And so every time I was out there, I got a glimpse to New York life, Manhattan life specifically. And I hated it. (laughs) <laughs> but I knew I had to be there. Hmm. And I knew I had to get out. Something was just telling me that I, I had to do this. And and that looking back, I'm like, that was huge for me. I think I was like 26. And I I will never forget the week before I was going to ask for a job transfer because I was also fortunate enough to work for a global company in advertising. So they had offices everywhere. The week before I was going to ask for a job transfer, they offered it to me. Oh, you manifested. (laughs) Right? (laughs) Yeah. Without even asking. I was like, this is wild. Okay. And that was December. And I'm like, when do you want me to move? They're like, as soon as possible. Wait, wait, wait! No, no, and backing away. I'm like, I, I got things to do. So I ended up moving in March, and it was really hard for my mom. Of course, I'm the only child, and you know, my, my grandparents too. But she knew that I had to I had to fly fly the nest. Yeah, yeah, and I and I did initially to continue my acting and writing career, but I was also I also found myself being. Um, I moved there initially not to get 
into everything, but I moved there with my boyfriend at the time of like four or five years. And he was able to get a job transfer too. And when we both moved out there, when we, I got the place for us and we got, he, I moved a week before him and he got there the first day that he was with me in that apartment. He tells me I can never see myself marrying you. What? The shit? Yeah. Oh, wow. And we break up on day one of moving to New this York. Place. Yeah. New. Expensive. Yes. New, new nobody except yeah. some coworkers. And there was my journey. So I worked mostly on myself. I mean, I still took classes. I did improv sketch comedy. I had more videos go viral on YouTube while I was out there uh, for comedy. And But that was really it. I wasn't going as hard as I wanted to because I was just so enthralled with the city and working in media buying and planning specifically, I was taken out a lot. It's how I met our mutual friend, Angie, too. And it just became about how much fun can I possibly have? (laughs) Yes, in in a city that it doesn't go to sleep. (laughs) Exactly. Yeah. Um, So I eventually met my person uh, across the country in San Francisco, uh, doing long distance. And he eventually asked me to move out there. So I moved out to San Francisco. Again, couldn't find my footing. I, I realized, okay, now I need to get serious about this, whatever I want to do. And six months later, I convinced them to move to LA. So I'm here, finally. And I decided to take a storytelling class okay. while I'm here. And this was in like 2015. And I didn't know what I was getting into. I wanted to become a TV writer. I wanted to be a Hollywood actress while I was here. live live the dream right but I knew I also wanted to do things on my own terms and so I took this class and found this art form of storytelling for the stage so we would just every week uh, learn new things about storytelling structure and practice telling a personal true story like five or six minutes in front of class and so I I became really enthralled with this format because everything I had been doing up to this point was some kind of mix of that Mm -hmm. so it didn't feel foreign and from then my teacher again uh, tapped me on the shoulder and was like you should try doing this story for the moth of course like what's the moth and it's a global nonprofit network of uh, it's also a podcast right a a renowned storytelling podcast where it's just you go up there and you tell your five minute story and you get points and you could go to next levels and, and win. And um, I was f- eventually featured on their podcast and was paid to tell my story in, in another city, you know, and I'm like, oh my gosh, like I could get paid for this. <laughs> and from then on, I, I, I was still with the theater company this whole time on and off. And together we pitched to Audible to to produce a book of short stories by Latinas across the U.S. called Talking While Female and Other Dangerous Acts. I love and- that. And Dangerous Acts. <laughs> yes, it is. It's true. <laughs> and, and it's really a collection of short stories on risk and resilience. And, you know, that was a whole process. And after that, I was like, I really, I really think I could teach this. And I had no teaching background. You know, I just pitched myself to whoever would take me here in LA, uh, small schools. And I eventually got hired to teach at uh, a small, like kind of improv school called the Ruby. And I, I just, I, I loved it. I love sharing everything that I learned, uh, you know, everything that I learned from, from the moth and from my storytelling class and through theater. So it's kind of now my whole approach is a mix of art plus science, you know, of blending traditional storytelling structure, uh, what what you need to get in there in order to engage, but also be honest. And, you know, how do you actually say this in your own voice and feel okay about it and stand in it too? Yeah, yeah, that's that's, I, yeah. I, wow. It, it's, it is truly an art and science. Like, this storytelling it really is I mean you have your methodology that you 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 
you um, employ in your coaching, right? Yeah. And so, and then you just bring the art into it, the finesse, like how can other people relate to your story? Because yeah. there's that process, like there, you can't just be, okay, for instance, like me, like my story, like, well, I could say it in a way, but it may not land on people. And you have developed a way of saying the same story and bringing tears to somebody's eyes or bringing laughter. And that, that is a skill. Yeah. That is a serious skill. No, oh, thank you. The, yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's not easy. Uh, like I said, I've been, I've been telling stories for the last, I don't even know how long, 12 years or something while, you know, still doing a full-time job. And for me, it's because I had no other choice. Like this, this was what I want wanted to do so I mean there's this whole also process of when is it time to let go of you know what's your foundation and what's bringing in the money right and and do your own thing and that for me that didn't happen until much much later on and a good chunk of that reason was because frankly uh, my job was making it easy for me to do these things on the side. Yeah, yeah. And that and that's the thing for a lot of amigas out there. Like you have this job, but you're bringing the money with this job. You, It's not that you hate it or anything like that. Right. You're just like, you're not loving it like you're loving the other thing. Exactly. And so because the money is there, I mean, it's it's hard. I mean, it could be challenging for the person to just pivot and go like 1000% in that other direction yeah, yeah. right yes it, it 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 is and it was and it continues to be I mean it's it's hard you know people see this whole uh, like entrepreneurship facade on social media that's all fun and games and running my own business uh just you know with my latte just running my business you know <laughs> it's not how it is like <laughs> Okay. creating that fancy reel of like how fabulous your life is and right a fabulous woman and <laughs> right it's like girl we're making those reels to remind us that we do have happy moments like yeah. <laughs> you know? sometimes we forget and we're like let me just make this real and look like I'm having a good time so maybe yeah. it'll force me into having a good time <laughs> yes it's like it's like a like psychosomatic like if yeah. like if you do it on, like in, in your brain like oh yeah 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 and then it just kind of transcends into right right <laughs> exactly <laughs> oh my goodness okay so needless to say you said goodbye to marketing yeah. and now you double down on storytelling yes yeah and and it's it's pretty new for me uh you know my I just created my LLC a year ago and there's waves like anything else, you know, uh, I, I teach not just coaching one on one, uh, but I do classes a couple times a year, group classes on Zoom, which I find is, is really helpful for folks because I'm all about providing a, a, a practical and safe space for you to just try things out yeah. and learn along the way. Right. So, I, yeah. And, and I'm still acting, too. Uh, I've been pretty successful in commercial acting so I'm still bringing in other forms of income and I'm also writing because that's still my my love as well and is a part of storytelling so I'm still pitching projects too so I'm putting I, I I've never been one to just do one thing I've always done several things at once and it's what keeps me sane personally and I just posted something the other day I'm like okay listen if JLo can sing dance act and be a vampire I can do whatever I want I am being a vampire <laughs> this woman is not a person yeah, it's like she's yeah like I'm at, at what point do you go to sleep like, exactly is that even part of the equation <laughs> yeah Yes. And still look gorgeous, right? Like fabulous body with this flawless skin. Right, right. Yeah, yeah. I mean, Unreal. it's it anything. You can do anything pretty much. Literally. Totally, totally. Yeah. And, and oh my God, yes. So now we, you're doing individual coaching, group coaching. I love that. And so what's next for you? 
Ah, good question. I mean, I'm still going to continue to do this. I, I love coaching. Uh, hopefully you can tell that you know, in our session. Yes, I love it. I, just a side note, Amigas, mm -hmm. our sessions are amazing. <laughs> Thank <laughs> you. Oh, that's so sweet. Oh, but I really do I enjoy every client I, I've had. Uh, every class that I teach, I, I teach at Second City now. So the first school that I learned to do anything on stage, I'm now a teacher at, which is fun. Well, cool, uh, full circle. I know. And people like say, they're like, you teach at Second City? And I'm like, oh yeah, there's no big deal. <laughs> like I forget that it, it is a, a big institution. And um, I, I still love performing in, in any capacity, but I'm very much focused on my own independent projects. And I have a uh, a short series that's in the uh, festival circuits right now uh, with my partner called uh, my friend Frida, and it's basically the premise of what if Frida was born a millennial? Uh, would she still be this revered artist, or would she just be a big weirdo? And <laughs> <laughs> yeah, right? Yes. Yeah. So I'm working on that. Um, just still script writing too, and and plugging into that. And, and and just keep following what what brings me joy. Yeah, and I think that's that's all we could do and define success on my own terms. Oh yes, define success on your own terms. I'm wondering if that is one of your tips on how an amiga can handle her shit. Oh my gosh, this was hard when you told me <laughs> two tips. I'm like two. <laughs> like, <what? laughs> um, my first tip <laughs> for everyone is. Make time every day to laugh. You have to, have to. I mean, at least for me, if I feel off, like I physically feel off and I'm like, why do I feel so weird? Like, oh my gosh, I haven't laughed once today. And so whether that's watching, you know, a couple funny TikToks or calling up a friend, or for me, I have to get my randomness out there, creating a reel, just Find, find your own outlet because laughter really helps you also get clear because you're literally shaking out energy, yeah. right? Yeah. The stagnant that's in your body by laughing it, uh, you know, out loud. Um, and two, for me, I obviously, I am a huge proponent of individualized help, you know, whether that's coaching or um, you know, hiring someone to, to, to help you with, with the specifics that you want to get ahead. But I also feel like you could supplement that by taking advantage of every free resource that's available to you in this world. You know, we're so media heavy. There's so many freaking outlets available to us now. It, it'd be wild for us not to, you know, tap into, and I think you started talking about in your book too, is tapping into things like YouTube, right? Or use social media to help you get ahead instead of, you know, wasting time on it and, and scrolling. Uh, be intentional with the media that you're interacting and engaging with, uh, because that's, that's how you're going to learn. And whenever we learn, we fire up those circuits that help us think more clearly and understand what it is that we really need and want. Ooh, I like all these tips. See, oh, they weren't scary. They're I good. know. <laughs> that, you know, um, and always it's interesting because I've had now 101 episodes. Yes. Yes, congrats. Thank you. And um, everyone that is on here on, on the podcast always has a different tip. It's crazy. Oh, wow. It's wild. It's That's super great. wild. Yeah. Like make time every day to laugh like that. I definitely have not heard it, Yay. but I love it. I love it. It's so important. I mean, it's um laughter. It's like we take for granted that, you know, life, you know, sometimes yeah. like let's not take ourselves so seriously. Totally. Like, literally. Totally. If we exactly. can, if we can learn to laugh, don't isn't there like some statistic that says that if you laugh you you uh you live longer <laughs> there has to be i mean come on and, and that's what i tell people too in the in their journaling process because you know i i talk about journaling in in my classes too is you know that that blank piece of page is for whatever you want it to be 
you, you don't have to, a friend told me, oh, I feel like I should journal about this, but what am I going to write? Like, that's not for you to determine. Yeah. That, that's for the pen to determine once you get there, yeah. right? And just let it go. Uh-huh. So for me, whenever, not whenever, uh, but last year, I was just not in a, in a good place, you know, mentally. And the thought of journaling my traumas and everything <laughs> that was weighing me down was just not attractive and I'm like I need something else and I was feeling guilty because it was always ingrained in me that you know that's the way you journal right you just write your crap on, on the page yeah 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 write your shit yeah <laughs> and it, I, I, it wasn't until I had another writing mentor who was a woman of color tell me that it's it's actually for whatever you want it to be write a few jokes, you know, if you want. And so that's what I started doing every morning before I could allow the dark cloud to hover over me. I just made myself write five jokes about mundane things in everyday life. You know, why, why is salt, why are salsa jars so damn hard to open? You know, let me write the ways. (laughs) Let me write the ways. (laughs) Yes. I, I hate that cotton balls are too soft, <laughs> you know. <laughs> like, because it, random, it's, that's up my alley. <laughs> exactly, and it and it makes you laugh, and it's so silly, and you can get like the most descriptive about it. Like, well, actually, you know, it like fizzles in your hand; it barely stays together. You know, when you're trying to take your makeup off, it it like creates this thing and whatever. So you can you're still practicing your creative skills, yeah. your writing skills. It's just focusing on, on different things, yeah. you know? Yeah. yeah. Uh, so that page is a hundred percent for whatever you want it to be. What is my third tip? I'm just sliding in there. <laughs> <laughs> Slide away. Slide away, girl. <laughs> uh, notice, notice that little slide. <laughs> yes. Oh, I know. I, oh God, you know, um, I never thought that writing could be fun. You know, Mm -hmm. I'm so used to writing. I mean, as a lawyer, you're writing briefs, you're writing motions, you're writing all kinds, logical, analytical, boring as fuck. Right. Um, but as I've been writing with you, um, I've been like enjoying and sometimes I crack myself up because I'm like, I can't believe this is coming out. <laughs> yes, I'm doing big seal claps for you. I, I love know, it. I love it. Yes. And so I think that's um, one thing that we can do as amigas, you know, if we decide to journal, which I yes. always encourage everybody to journal, you yes. know, doesn't necessarily have to be about the hard day or the awful thing or how you know the anxiety you're feeling and the hopeless and struggle which is so typical of Mexican songs right (laughs) it could be it could be totally the opposite like make a joke I love that yeah and and it's not pushing away anything it's choosing intentionally to shift your focus yes and it's not it's not to say that you're ignoring anything you know but for me it was chronic and it was weighing down on me for longer than I wanted it to you know that's what I I'm talking about when you want to shift and refocus your attention because it you're just having an off day you know out of the many good days you have then sure you know right whatever is bothering you you know but if you're constantly finding yourself in a place that you just don't want to be then you get to choose to go somewhere else you know and, and and write about something that makes that puts a smile on your face. Yes, I love this. All right, amigas. So, how can people find you? Oh my gosh, so many places. So, my storytelling co- company is called Storypathy. So, you could find that on across all social media. Story P A T H Y, all one word. Storypathy.com is my website. Um, just going through a huge rebranding. So stay tuned for that. <laughs> and um, uh, my personal account, if you want some laughs, is at, ugh, it's so, <laughs> okay, it's C-H-R-I-X-T-I-N-A-I. 
But if you just Google my full name, that is definitely on this podcast, you'll find me everywhere. <laughs> yes, yes. And, and and she is everywhere. I mean, <laughs> she's she's a performer. So she's been on big stages. And so you can definitely find her. And of course, we're going to write it in our show notes. So you can always refer back to um, her website and all of her social details and make sure you follow her on Instagram because it's funny. She'll crack you up. <laughs> right. so say, 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 to, uh, say your Instagram handle. Yeah. It's at Christina. I, but instead of an S it's an X uh, letter I at the end. <laughs> so, so follow her. You're going to, you're going to get a lot of laughter. Um, you. And you know, we need more laughter in our life. Yes, we do. We're yes. too serious. We're too serious, but we need a laughter. Well, thank you so much, Christina. I really appreciate this and your tips and and just who you are and how you really have inspired me and has shown me that I could write a different way. Yay! Oh, <laughs> and thank not you, be, Jackie. I not be so stuck. Jesus yeah, Christ. Totally. No, thank you so much, Jackie. And thank you to your audience for listening. Oh, yes. Thank you so much for being here on Amiga Hand Your Shit Podcast.